Okay, guys, I have been... <laughs> okay, guys, I've been learning Rhino for lure design uh, for a lot of reasons that I'll get into in a later video, but I wanted to show you something that I think is pretty darn cool, relatively easy, and very useful for those in the lure design space, especially those that like to paint. Unlike me, I hate paint. But we're going to be using Rhino and specifically the Grasshopper add-on, I don't know what you would call it. It's a program inside of Rhino that you can use to make some 3D printed stencils. We made stencils in the past, but the cool thing about Grasshopper and Rhino is it makes it super duper easy. And we're going to start with a very, very simple one today, a very simple hex grid. You get a cool hex pattern. So let's hop in and go. So we cook this little icon here. We just open this Rhino 7 commercial version. You can get, I think it's like a... 90 day trial or something. It's like a really long trial. Link in the description to get you one. So we click the little green button up here, Grasshopper, and it's gonna load Grasshopper for us. And this is nowhere near like a full tutorial for Grasshopper and Rhino because I don't know enough about either to make a full tutorial. All right, I'm gonna just line these things up here. All right, so I have Rhino open in perspective view. So the first thing I want to do is double click and we're going to type in hex and there's this hexagonal grid here. Our plane is fine. We don't really need to worry about that. It's going to be right there. Our extent, let's do 100. And I'm just double clipping, double clipping, double clicking and typing in a number and that gets a number slider in Grasshopper. And we're going to grab that and pull that into the extent X and extent Y. That'll give us a 100 by 100 millimeter grid. And size of the hexes, let's just say 1.8 again millimeters. I'm just typing that in and I'm connecting that to the side. Okay, this is actually 100 by 100 units of the hexes. Yeah, the number of grid cells. So, um, this will be 180 by 180 right now. Kind of big, but um, maybe we'll bump that down to 80. Make it a little bit smaller so not so crazy big. Generally, you don't need a giant stencil, but you know, you can make it as big as you want. Uh, probably as big as your printer can handle. All right, so now we're gonna use a plugin called Weaver Bird. I'll put a link at the end of this video to a video on how to use it, how to install it. Uh, but we're gonna use uh, something they call Picture Frame. So if I just type in picture frame, Weaver Bird's picture frame, we have the mesh cell poly, boom. Distance is going to be, you can see here, this like line around here, that's this distance. So um, first thing we're gonna fix is this dotted line here. That usually means that it's something's working but it doesn't like it and generally flatten will fix that. So we got a nice good connection, a nice solid line connecting those two things. And then we're going to middle click and hide this. That's going to hide our original uh, mesh grid. Uh, as you're in Grasshopper, as you add more steps, if they're all visible, it can become very difficult figuring out what the heck is going on. All right, so this distance is this width here. Um, let's make that maybe 2.6. I'm just making up crap here. And then mouse over inset type. Give me one or a zero. I'm just gonna leave that alone because that seems fun to me. All right, so now I need to extrude this mesh. I have basically the outline of a mesh and I need to give it volume by extruding it into Z axis. So I'm gonna click on Weaver Bird because I can never remember what this thing is. And I think we have transform mesh thicken. There we go, found it. Pop that down here. Output mesh goes into here, and this distance is five. So now we can turn this off like I did before. Boom, makes it easier. But you can see over here, that's a five millimeter mesh, probably something we don't need. I think we only need it to be about two millimeters thick. So we're gonna click two, enter, and connect that into there. Boom. And this offset type is, um, yeah, I don't even know what that is, but this looks cool. So now we have basically a hex grid that we can print. So what we do now is right click on this, click bake. And Rhino has this kind of concept of layers like Photoshop or anything like that you're used to. You can just pick one, pick layer three. Click on okay. And now if we go back over into Rhino, go to layers, 
add layer three. So we can actually just turn this off over here. And there is our mesh. Oh, we're not in solid view. So right click, or excuse me, click shaded, and you can see our mesh thing here. So now all we do is do file, save as, and we want it to be a, usually STL file is what you want here. Depending on what your slicer uses, you can use step files, 3MF files, whatever. We're just gonna use good old STL. And we're gonna call this Hexgrid. Now you load that into your printer and slice it. Let's see if we can use something maybe a little cooler. I don't know what gets cooler than that, but let's see. So I'm gonna turn off layer three now and zoom out. And what we're gonna do is disconnect this picture frame and we're gonna put some other transform in the middle. All right guys, by the way, now I'm flying like without a parachute or whatever, flying without radar. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing because I've never done this particular step before. But Weaverbird also has these other cool transforms. Okay, so Weevil, Weevil, Weevilbird, <laughs> Weaverbird has this um, other thing called Camel Clark subdivision where it takes your lines and subdivides them. I'm sure there's some super cool math behind it. I have no idea what it is, but let's throw it in there and see what happens. Click here, boom, and now it has mesh curve. So we're gonna take our mesh output boom into that you can see what happens is now we have a little bit more round edge there so if we look at this level number of subdivides per face that's probably going to be one so if i want to range inside of a number slider if i type in a number dot dot and another number let's say 10 for this case now i have a slider from one to ten cool trick so let's pop this into this level change these here and basically it's just going to make it smoother circles so this is like a more hexy circle all right so then we just take our mesh curves let's take this that again turn this off turn that off Or maybe I forgot to turn on visibility again. Durr. All right, so now we have a little more rounded stencil. Again, same thing. Make it. We'll put this one on layer four, just cause. Click on OK. Turn off layer four for now by just clicking that little guy. So you can go through, there's all kinds of plugins in Rhino to make all kinds of cool patterns on flat planes to make all kinds of cool stencils. Let's take a look at another one that I did previously. This is using a Voronoi pattern. And I've done these before in Fusion. There's a plugin you can buy, but it's like just here in Rhino slash Grasshopper. And so, um, you know, you can do these inside of Rhino itself. Um, I actually don't really know how, but the cool thing about doing it in Grasshopper is it's fully parametric, which means that I can come in and change any of these sliders here. So this is the extrusion height. If I want to make it taller, I just move that over and then my extrusion gets taller. If I want my radius on these guys to be smaller, I can double click and say, let's make it a five millimeter radius. And that's going to change that. Now all these things are going to calculate kind of, and sometimes it's slower, but you can see now we have much more circular patterns there, which I don't like. So let's see if 6.4, gets me back to more noise. Yeah, cool. But again, you can play around with this and go crazy all day long. You can also change this guy. This is how we created the Voronoi pattern. And that's just another example of what you can do. Let's take a look and see what these stencils look like after we 3D print them. 